New York City is the melting pot of culture, the fashion capital of the world, the birthplace of hip hop. When it comes to this combination, there is no limits when it comes to style. Growing up in New York, we thought we were the center of the world. I walk the streets. The streets are just like an outside runway show. All you had was what you were able to wear. Fashion is another element of hip hop. And I think we need to change the elements of hip hop and add fashion. Coming into the 80s now, where I feel uh, 1980, I would say, is when the underground uh, came above ground. With the rise of hip hop and fashion, another culture was born the sneaker culture. Sneaker brands was the front runners in shoe culture, but Clarks arrives on the scene, and out of nowhere, behold, the Wallaby. The first time I saw the Wallaby was in a stock room, like receiving the goods, you know, and then opening up the first box. You can imagine what the Wallaby looks like to a 13-year-old kid. I remember seeing them, but seeing them with, within the hip hop culture as a, classy alternative. It'd be like somebody drinking Hennessy, or you know, it's like an upgrade to your normal kit. They totally disrupted what was going on because before that it was literally um, 5411s, it was shell toes, and it was Pumas, um, maybe Chuck Taylors a little bit, but then here comes this shoe that just changed the game. Some of the artists I remember um, wearing Wallabies as I grew up was uh, definitely Dana Dane, who's from Brooklyn, from Fort Greene. And of course, I mean, KRS-One. I've seen him at shows with black Wallabies on leather ones. You know, Rick was one of those guys who was really out front early with the, with the Wally, but, you know, as time passed, you start to see, you see, you know, the guys from Staten Island, the whole crew from Staten Island, Ghostface, Raekwon, they're all wearing Wallabies, talking about them. Nas is wearing Wallabies. You know, these great artists now that have become like, you know, the champions for this music industry in itself are wearing them, embracing them, um, and it just caught on. Growing up, I remember seeing Wallabies and like, oh, noticing that these are like really cool and these are actually fly when I seen Method Man actually come out. I forgot what it was for, I think it was a photo shoot, but he was in his crib with one of his kids and he had these blue Wallabies on. Some of the first people I seen wearing Wallies was, was Ghost and Ray. Um, actually, they were the first people I seen wearing Wallies. I feel like they made Wallies cool in the 90s. First niggas I seen wearing Wallaby Clarks was um, Jamaicans and old school niggas from my hood. You know, the older cats. You know, it was, it was the Jamaicans, of course, that was wearing them on the regular because they was wearing the desert boot joints and they was wearing the wallies. And then, you know, you had some of the OGs that we grew up under wearing them. How I got introduced to Clarks to the wallies with the Jamaicans and um, um, the Guyanese cats that was out there getting money. And that came from like, from Raekwon's project, Paul Kill. You know what I mean? It was like a whole new city up there compared to every, all the other places on Staten Island. Back in like 86, 85, 86, it was bubbling. It was bubbling up there in the hill. As hip hop artists start to, started to like embrace, you know, their own style of self-expression and hip hop then grew, um, the bigger hip hop artists then realized that their fashion sense you know, was really dictating how people were dressing. And as media became bigger and bigger, music videos and, um, and as hip hop started to cross over into mainstream, um, I think that, you know, their fashion sense, these, these artists' fashion sense really started to become super influential as hip hop became more influential. I think the world really took notice when I did Iron Man. When I did Iron Man, because to me, the um, to me, the cover of Iron Man is like one of the illest covers I ever seen. The first time I saw the Iron Man cover, if you look at their faces, it's like they're so relaxed, just holding, like just you see colors and you like, what the 
hell? Like, what, what the hell? Like, all of these colors and you wondering, did, like, this is, this ain't Photoshop. You know what I mean? As far as like, all the Wally, Wally's, different color Wally's. I remember I had a Chinese man. His name was Kim. And I used to go to, the, to, to, to Kim's spot and I brought him a bunch of shoes one day. And I said, yo, I need you to dye these for me. I need you to dye them. First he dyed them, he went crazy on them. He dyed them watermelon, lime green, candy cane color, red and, you know what I mean? So, so, but then I said, yeah, I need you to dip them. I need you to split them in half. Let me see where you can go with this. And that's when you see the Iron Man, the Iron Man cover with all them shoes that was just cut in half. It was just, you know, such a part of that superhero element in hip hop. Like the Wally's was the cape for, for that. The Apollo Kids video was one of my illest videos I ever did. You know, uh, shout out to my man, Chris Robinson. You know, he had the vision. I don't know, it was magic. It was magic, yo. And like with videos like Apollo Kids, the way the Wally's are being presented, as hip hop was changing too, it was like a big part of the change. I feel like Supreme Clientele kind of pushed uh, that style of rap to a new to a new level. When he did that video and he has the, the, the robe on and he's just going crazy, that I mean that shows you the power of the Wallaby. And I'm pretty sure it resonated with a lot of kids where they went out and cop. I mean, Wallaby sales had to go up after Ghostface and them. Because he showed me, he came, everything sketched out, too. He came with a sketch I can remember, like, like, like pieces just drawn up. Okay, this is that, and this was going to be here. Then you're going to be in the factory doing this. And then you're going to have a performance shot right here. You're just going to do that. Then we're going to put you in another room right here. You know, with me and my guys, we all had black furs on. We rock stars from Staten Island, for real. Like, we, you know, we going to put everything that you know that's supposed to be in it in it. <laughs> I think that video, to this day, will knock a lot of videos out. The thing with Ghost and the Wu did for the Wallows was incredible. Because me, personally, as an owner of Ghostface Killer Wallabies, like, you know what I'm saying, that he sent to me himself because he knows I love Wallows. They saved him. They made him last to the end of time. Me being on the set on uh, um, Wu-Tang, an American saga, uh, Ghostface and, and Raekwon, they, I think they both definitely had the Wallys on, on the set. And that was like a part of the wardrobe, you know what I mean? So that's, that, was, that was dope to me to see that. So to grow up to it and hear them talking about it and, and really see it from afar, and then to be a part of the, 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 the TV show, and then I go to the wardrobe and I see them. I see the Wallys there on, on the set. So it just... Um, it's it, it just kind of like reassured, you know what I mean? What, what was going on back then. And the Wu brought Wally's to the hood. I mean, like, he, they made it, they made it fashionable for us. You know what I mean? They made it, they showed us how to wear them. You know what I mean? With the, with the polo, with the Nordica, you know what I mean? Like, they was putting on. The first Wallabies I actually got that were, you know, I mean, I didn't even purchase them, they were given to me, were uh, from Nigo in, in Tokyo. And he had done a collaboration with them. And that was just insane because he was taking things to the next level already anyway. And it's kind of like you get the uh, seal of approval on stuff vis-a-vis -vis his aesthetics and stuff. So, and I was honored, you know, there was like a beautiful bait uh, Whatever the, the graphic on it was, it was super subtle and it might have been some embossed or knocked out kind of thing. It was really nice and, and I was in those for a while. At the time, you know, like I said, I believe this is 2006, 7, I would have been using this atomic imagery a lot in my work. Uh, so as a kind of recognizable icon from my catalog of stuff. We went with this and it's one of the first times I actually uh, had this on a sneaker. Uh, I'm sorry, I never had this on a sneaker before. First time I got to put this on this particular shoe. When we got to, you know, thinking about design and, and how the Wally would work for Sweet Chick, um, 
you know, we needed to make it so that it was some sort of literal interpretation for what the restaurant is. So we decided to, to work with a waffle pattern, but wanted to see how we could do this in a way that it was wearable. Um, you know, for me, you know, the reason why we love the Wally and why, you know, we've embraced this is because we want to wear it. Um, and if we're going to make one as a restaurant, I want the same people that we would be wearing it, just a regular Wally, to also look at this and say, I want to put this on my feet. My favorite uh, project on the Wallabies is definitely the one on my, on my feet right now, um, which is called the Rosendale. Um, and it's a reworked version of the Wallaby to be a bit more sleeker in the toe with a different tooling um, that resembles more of a runner, so like a runner shape crepe sole. Um, and then changing the tooling and the last really bring the shoe to a whole different uh, a whole different style and a whole different look, um, but still iconic and recognizable or being as familiar as the Wallaby. And I love where it's going. Um, Fashion-wise, it's, it's definitely never gonna die. It's always gonna be a premier shoe to wear on any occasion. Um, it'll always be the most comfortable shoe. The main thing I looked at when I seen them because what I know Clarks is from, what I know about Clarks, is the front. It's something about that curve in the front. It's the sole. It's the sole. Look at it. It's the gummy bottom. It's incredible. So when I'm styling on set, my go-to footwear is definitely Clarks. Um, I feel that way because they just go with everything. Um, I'm very big on pants. Um, I really love how almost all pants, how they just flow and sit so nicely on Clarks, whether they're the high Clarks or the low Clarks. Um, Clarks are just so versatile and they just go with everything. So definitely a sta staple piece when I'm styling for sure. I think for me, Wallabies represented style, but me wearing them as a woman it was flavor, and it also exuded confidence. I really love to see everything that Clarks is doing, and I'm really excited to see what they have in store for the future. I know they're gonna kill it, um, and it's great to see everything that they're doing for the ladies now. Wallaby Clark is even bigger than New York. Like, I don't know about y'all, but the Clark store is lit. If you ever been to a Clark store to get a pair of Clarks, there's white people in there, there's Spanish people, there's short people, there's small people, there's people who wear a nice shoe and feel comfortable. So me personally, I've been rocking Wally's forever and I'm gonna continue to rock Wally's, like you know what I'm saying? I wish I had a picture of my first black tie and said, Wally's. Like you know what I'm saying? Whatever the last time I had on a suit, guess what I had on? Wally's. The Wallaby being Clarks has stood the test of time in New York and beyond. With Clarks' rich history and quality products, the Clarks brand will be around for many more years to come. This is Clarks in New York.